There is always one word that haunts the minds of anyone who has created something that has captured the imagination of the entire world. Impressed you with a performance that feels like no other. Many have suffered the curse of this word. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you. Sequels. Many sequels to anything tend to be the victim of all kinds of problems. Bad scripts, faulty controls, wrong direction, and of course being overhyped by the media. There are not many films that have good sequels and lived up to the hype, and The Dark Knight is not one of them. I mean, what happened? Did its balls drop off? It had a good start where this really talented guy called the Joker did this stuff and... And just what do you think you're doing? I wanted to give everyone my take on this movie called The Dark Knight. No, Smeghead, it's The Dark Knight and I'm reviewing this movie. Okay. There was no doubt in anyone's mind there was going to be one movie that took 2008 by storm. And if you think it's Cloverfield, then you're an idiot. The Dark Knight is a movie that has been highly anticipated and hyped unlike any movie in living memory, and has lived up to the hype. And yes, it's become my new fave superhero movie. Sorry, Iron Man. The storytelling and direction of this movie stays true to the more suspenseful thriller type instead of delivering your average and standard comic book movie, while pushing it past what Batman Begins wrote, to the point you have to remind yourself this is a comic book movie. The basic story is how the Batman has become so much of a pain in the criminal's asses that a psychotic terrorist called the Joker offers his services on killing Batman. Oh, oh, now, t tell him, tell him how I cause lots of chaos and anarchy. I'm getting to that. So he begins a series of attacks in Gotham causing Batman to doubt if he can stand up to someone like the Joker, but through tragedy and determination he challenges Joker's mind games as well as face a former friend turned psychopath Harvey Dent, aka Two-Face. The Batman series is the only comic book franchise that does more than one villain on screen well. This movie has Batman dealing with Joker, Two-Face, Scarecrow, Sal Moroni, the Russian, and some Chinese dude. You hear that, Stark? How many villains did you have, hmm? Besides the Iron Giant ripoff and your ego. Well... Stop butting in. The movie also introduces a new character in the form of Harvey Dent, a district attorney. The movie did something a lot of other movies fail to do. If the character is to meet some tragedy or form of transformation, it values the character and person they were and slowly builds on the big reveal of their new persona. Eddie Brock in Spider-Man 3 is a good example of doing it wrong. Scarecrow's involvement was pretty weak. It made you feel, what was the point? Plus he seems to have made a very quick recovery from his exit in the previous film. I like the idea of Batman knockoffs. I tend to feel, the hockey pads, was a reference to Adam West. The fight scenes were vastly superior to the choppy close-up look from Batman Begins, but I was more impressed by the hidden suspense and the psychological elements from both Joker and Two-Face. Oh, and the destruction of the Batmobile made MJ Knight cry. One thing that made me happy was the death of Rachel Dawes. I thought she was a weak and useless character, the token damsel in distress if you will. And even though it was Maggie Gyllenhaal who got blown into a million pieces, in my head it was Katie Holmes. I hope it was for you too. Now we come to the part of the review you want to hear. What do I think of the new Joker? I bet, I bet, you think I look like a stud. Oh, please, you look like Beetlejuice. You wanna know how I got these scars? Were you trying to shave? In the past, there have been five forms of the Joker. Cesar Romero, Jack Nicholson, Mark Hamill, Kevin Michael Richardson, and now Heath Ledger. Looking at them in more depth, I can safely, and unpopularly say, it's not right to compare them for they're all designed to meet certain audiences, but I honestly think Jack Nicholson's version is better. Here are my reasons. The Joker in Tim Burton's movie was more comic book accurate, even down to the origin. Ledger's just some nut with makeup. It's not really the same. Joker in this movie doesn't laugh as much as I wanted. You couldn't stop Jack giggling without killing him. And while I'm going over the complaints before the praise, hearing the... You wanna know how I got these scars? Lion lost its charm the second time you heard it, because he kept changing the story. It's kinda like hearing Johnny Depp say, I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. For the 300th time in the Pirates movies, something effective loses its charm the more you hear it. Now before you start spamming me with hatred like a storm dork, let me go over the good qualities. Now we're talking. Pretty much every line of dialogue from this guy is priceless. It has a sense of charm and sarcasm to it, mainly when he gets talking to the mob bosses and other criminals. 
you really got to see the more cunning and criminal mind the Joker is capable of in this movie. How he planned everything out down to the last detail. Take the opening scene for example, how he tells each hired goon to kill each other one by one. He says, I killed the bus driver. Before you can say, what bus driver? A bus smashes through the wall killing the thug asking the same question. The more sinister parts of his schemes were very creative, such as killing a bat fake, the magic trick, and placing a bomb phone in some guy's stomach. You really wonder how Joker comes up with these kind of plans. Do I look like a guy with a plan? But come on, you plan everything out. There's even a shot of you reading a script you wrote. Oh yeah? Here is something I didn't write down. I cut a stupid otaku's head off. Why? Because it makes people lose their minds. I mean, she is, well, she is overrated. True. By the way, the nurse look suits you. Why, thank you. Two-Face really impressed me. The makeup and the psychological changes make Tommy Lee Jones seem like nothing. It got everything spot on, right down to the coin. Though I wonder how he had time to get that custom suit made. Now this is something me and MJ Knight noticed. Commissioner Gordon's wife in this movie is called Barbara. Wait, isn't his daughter called the- Oh dear. And I thought I was sick. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. This is how a sequel should be done. It built enough hype without ruining it, fantastic character development and plot direction. Seriously, just go watch this movie. You will see nothing like this again for a long time. Well, maybe until Batman 3 arrives. But still, I would like to see more Two-Face and Scarecrow interaction and plot development. And this will probably be Joker's only movie due to untimely passings. The Dark Knight gets a B plus. Um... Well, hello, beautiful. Why wasn't I in this review? Because it's really hard to do your voice. Oh, okay. <laughs>